Hello, welcome to this week's installment of Communications and Cigars. I'm your host, John Crook. Thank you for tuning in. Um, as you can see in, in the corner, it should be right about here, I think it says, um, it's it, it, this is a recorded episode and recorded installment, as I did say, for this week and the next two weeks, we are going to be doing some recorded episodes. But, as I said on the last installment, I was going to do something special. I was going to have a special guest. So I want to welcome special guest. Uh, not only is he a mentor in the ham community, uh, not only is he a fellow ham, but he also is my dad, and it is Wally N9VAO. Hello, everyone, and John, thanks for having me on with you. Here. It's a great day to be outside, even. It is. It is. So we are recording it early. We are not in um, the Studio B, as I kind of jokingly call or Studio P, the porch. Um, so as you can see, it is daytime. There is nothing behind me. I am in great northern Wisconsin right now, uh, where if anybody is familiar with Wisconsin, I know I do have some Wisconsin visitors. Yes, I am north of Highway 8, and yes, I do have my permit. But the point, I, I wanted to get Dad in here on this one, um, because today's topic is going to be that age-old question that we ask all of ourselves, that we hear people ask all the time, do I... Buy a handheld first, or do I buy a mobile radio first? And I, th I think that's that's a very good, legitimate question for a lot of people. Oh, definitely, definitely. And, and the reason I wanted to have you on is because you are obviously up here in northern Wisconsin, and you are not in a metro or urban area in any way, shape, or form, and there are not a lot of repeaters up here. Right, right. Tr uh, tr communications can tend to sometimes get a little difficult up in the northern parts of the state of Wisconsin here. But uh, when you do come across a repeater, then go ahead and use it, and you'd be surprised how many sometimes other people are on there too. Exactly. And and I live more so near the Twin Cities down there, um, but into Wisconsin. So I, I kind of have repeaters, you know, somewhat there. But I thought it would be great to have, and, and we could talk about this question and have it on there. But, of course, it's communication cigars. We're going to talk about communications. Let's talk about our cigars. So, I am enjoying from the Deadwood Tobacco Company. I'm going to say that these are almost going to be my new favorite ones here. I have them. Um, I have a Sweet Jane cigar. Now I know they make a couple different ones. Um, they make Sweet Jane. They make Fat Bottom Girl, and I can't remember the other one. But is a Sturgis Limited Edition out there? They're, they are available. They are hard to get because they are actually rolled and made in the Dakotas. Um, has a sweet kind of flavor to it. It's got a nice dark brown wrapper on there it's easily punched i've never had a bad one of these I, I i i truly love them hands down if you if you want something that has a little bit of a nice little sweet taste to it um but you know still has a nice um good aroma pleasing to the palate and everything like that i would definitely recommend deadwood tobacco company and this is the sweet jane they make three types on there what are you what are you having today here john what i have today it's called a quorum shade and this is the last one that I've got of a box of these that I bought. And I tell you what, I'm going to get another box. I really like them. They're made by the J.C. Newman Cigar Company down in Nicaragua. And I know that you can see these a lot in a lot of cigar stores. Or if you go online and look at one of the cigar companies online. Like I said, I bought a box of these. This is my last one. I'm going to get another box. Good to hear that. Now, remember, if you're tuning in to us and you are a cigar aficionado, like to go ahead and share what you have, make sure you put it into the comments on here. Let us know what you're enjoying while watching the video. Um, each week I try to have a little bit of a different cigar on there. So uh, just let us know. Just let us know. So mm -hmm. let's get into the topic at hand. All right. Mobile or portable or handheld. What do we what do we call what do we call I mean it's all the same right it's relatively the same mobile portable or well handheld portable yeah you know as the years were going by from when I first got interested in radio and that was golly I think it was back when I was about 14 years old I got interested in communications first with shortwave radios and that and people called the handheld the portable all different names through the years and I think it's right now well, I've got a handheld, if it's an amateur radio or maybe mm -hmm. an FRS radio. Yep. But then you get into law enforcement and public services, they're going to be calling them portables. So, yeah, so it's portable. Yeah, and it's and it's really weird because 
I've heard a lot of people say the same thing too, mm -hmm. where it's like, you know, especially with these little QRP devices for the amateur thing. Yes. Some people call those portable rigs and it's like, okay, is portable mean a portable, like a portable radio or is it a handheld? And I think that, that nomenclature, I, 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 I think it really screw people up sometimes. And it's like, but it's a left twix, right twix thing, as I say. It, you know what? It does the same thing, right? Yeah, I know. There's a lot of, of what you could call portables on the amateur market because they're the, like the little QRP rigs that you got a battery pack. I've even seen things on the Internet where guys had them mounted on a bicycle and bicycling down the road and talking on his radio. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a handheld. It was a portable. He had the battery pack tied to the handlebars of the bike. The radio actually was like on a backpack on him. And you can see the antenna sticking up. Exactly. So it's it's there. So let's get but let's get through the nomenclature, because today's discussion I think is going to really impact a couple specific um, radio services, and that's what I'll say. So obviously there's a difference in amateur radio. There's going to be a yep. difference in GMRS. Yes. There's actually going to be a difference when we look at public safety as well as business. But I think it's you know, important to point out. There is a difference, and that's why I wanted to bring up the definition, because there is a difference in CB, but there's a big thing with CB, and, and, and we're talking power differences. All the other bands, you know, your mobiles can put out anywhere from, I've seen the lowest, like there's some 10, 15 watt mobile radios, yep. um, all the way up to 100 watt radios. Um, there still are a few out in the market and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Those are... Um, Usually, you're, you're more of your public safety business type radios. Yeah. Not, not necessarily, but Amateur does have some like 85 waters and stuff. Yes. And then your handhelds are going to put out anywhere from, based on band and frequency, you know, you're putting out anywhere from 5 to 7 watts all the way up to 1 to 2, maybe maybe 3 watts, depending on frequency as we get up there. Mm -hmm. Right. But CB is a little different. And I think let's tackle CB first because okay. CB is restricted for power output. So regardless if you have a mobile setup, Versus if you have a handheld setup, so this is a good thing to say handheld in that case, mm -hmm. you're actually still looking at the same amount of power for the CB band, that's going to more come down to convenience. Right. With CB, you're limited to 5 watts input into the final stage of whether it be a handheld or a mobile radio or even a base radio. So now you've got about maybe 3 watts at best coming out if you got a good 0 SWR. Correct, yeah, loss of antenna. And so. also what's going to hurt too, well, it hurts in all the radio services with base radios and mobiles. The longer the coax run to the antenna, the less of the signal is going to get at that antenna. Correct. So you want to have a high-gain antenna. Plus the frequency range that Citizens Band uses. Now, I'm not knocking it. I mean, a lot of guys that are expert amateurs today, that's how we got our start, was with CB radio. The frequency that you use also is kind of limiting you on the distance the signal can travel. Correct. And then we should also point out here, too, because I know we do have a few viewers that pop in from, as I say, across the pond. What we're making reference to is the U.S. CB band. So we're talking about the 27 megahertz regions. Correct. Because sometimes we get over to Australia and other parts of the world, what they call CB, they actually call it UHF CB, and that's actually in the UHF portion. Yep. But either way, when we're talking about power restrictions, in that case, the CB is going to be that that area of whether you have a mobile or a handheld, you're both going to be putting out the same power output. Quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, yep. that's correct. Yep. Well, now, the another thing you got to remember about CB2 is, is that since the distances of the communications are so short, you're always trying to use the biggest antenna you can. And when I get at that now, if you're putting in a car, I remember the first CB radio I had umpteen years ago, and I put in a car, I had a whip antenna whip on, down. on the back bumper, and the thing was 102 inches long, which is 8 feet long. Yeah. And that's a big antenna. It is. The antennas for the base stations are large also. When you start cutting back to like quarter wave antennas for CB, man, you're really shortening your distance. Yep. Yeah. And that's and that's and that's a good point because, you know, especially talking we're talking frequency band, uh -huh. we're talking restricted power. Now let's go ahead and shift out of C B here. Let's talk about the amateur radio side of things. Mm -hmm. So usually most amateur radios, you got one here right now, you know, are putting out, um, you know, four four to five watts, yep. you know, depending on bands. So usually most handhelds and let, let, let me preface this with this because I don't want I want anybody getting mad at me here or or or, or uh, writing me saying you're an idiot, but you know there are and there were Motorola even made them. There were ten meter and six meter handhelds that they did make yes. back in the day. Yes. Um. 
as a matter of fact, okay, so I like James Bond movies. I find it funny because um, in the movie Octopussy, you get a good example in there. They had the Motorola MX series. Oh, yes. The big silver one. And his antenna, like, is that long. And in the movie, it's like he's, he's got it's like it was about like this size. It's got like an antenna that big, and he's holding it right to his face. And you know he's got to be like on like in the twenty eight megahertz range or Probably. whatever, or yep. or in the fifty megahertz range. You know the forty nine megahertz wherever. And you're just like, God, he's got to be getting so much RF right in his face here. But um, <laughs> but we're talking kind of current production. Not too many non VHF UHF handhelds out there right now. Correct. There, yeah. Uh, another thing you got to remember about too now, I'm going to back up just a little bit here. What people are, might be wondering, especially if we have somebody watching this, thinking of getting in the radio, so they're going to listen to what we're saying. Remember now, with a CB, you're gonna you get those. I'm going to repeat this again. You get those short antennas. You're limiting your distance. CB is real popular amongst the truckers along the yep. highway. They yep. still use them quite a bit to talk to one another. Yep warn each other about the way scales coming up or maybe if they see a state trooper in the area. Yep. With uh, amateur radio now, I have been in my mobile, and you have too when you had mm -hmm. an HF rig in your mobile. Mm -hmm. You talked to, a, uh, I think it was Italy that one day. Didn't you make a... I did. Well, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, HF, all, all the way. Yeah. I was just tuning around 40 just to, yeah. for, for sake of it. And then there's usually, when you get into, like John said earlier here, the more urban areas, there's a lot more repeaters in use there to where this handheld, I might even be able, depending on the repeater and what it can do, talk around the world on just a handheld like this. And that even goes ahead and adds more to the, the debate, I guess I would kind yep. of say, is because people are saying, you know, handheld versus, you know, once again, handheld versus mobile. So right. the amateur wise, you know, you're looking at, you know, a handheld device that's going to be able to do four to five watts. Some do even mm -hmm. seven watts. You know, that's all once again frequency dependent because if you're looking VHF, you know, you can go a little more in VHF. UHF is usually four to five watts max. But then once again, now that comes into the factor of saying, hey, we're up in northern Wisconsin here, not a whole heck of a lot of repeaters. You probably right. realistically have a repeater every conservatively, let's say thirty miles. Right or or oh, or yeah, so about that, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm talking pins on the map too, like the repeaters yeah, and, here, and, thirty miles. And that's or, yeah, as the crow flies, that's not going to be road correct, miles, right? Correct. Now, obviously, a lot of linked repeaters do exist, so yes. that helps um, kind of kind of help offset this discussion because obviously, linked repeaters, remote recites, receive sites, mm -hmm. all those things like that, and amateur site, that's going to help you out a lot. Yeah. But what I usually hear, and what I tend to hear is that people have this debate is, I'm a new ham, I just got into the hobby, I'm, I'm going to have to go with a handheld because I can't afford a mobile. You know, so that's the right. other deciding factor. Well, the other thing, too, I like to tell people, especially when it comes to communications, get your feet wet first and get a little experience before you dive into it 100% and find out it's not for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you got equipment that, well, you're not going to send it back to where you bought it from. They're not going to take it. Now you're going to try to sell it and all that. So a handheld device of good quality, get your feet wet first, get on the Internet, find out where all the repeaters are, and you can on the Internet, of the area you live in, whether it be mm -hmm. in a rural area like this up here, I'm in with northern Wisconsin, or you're by the Twin Cities, or you're by Madison, Milwaukee, New York, you LA. Include, yeah, you got to include California. Wherever. In New you know. York, okay. We'll get, <laughs> Miami. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. But yeah, get your. That's but not just Chicago. what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> No, no, I, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're joking. I, there's, there's friends I know in Chicago that I always <laughs> joke around about the repeater. So, so guys in Northern Illinois, props yep. to you guys. Sir. But, but you, yes, you're yep. right. You're right. Yeah. And then, now, if you're not into amateur and you're watching us because you're deciding what kind of radio system or something to get because you've got a, maybe a business, mm -hmm. maybe you've got a that, manufacturing yep. company where you got a lot of employees that you need to talk to them. One good example is everybody's been to a Walmart. Everybody sees the associates in Walmart, can't call them employees, associates, have a handheld on their hip. Yep. The manager, anybody in that store, somebody working in sporting goods could call somebody over in their meat department and say, hey, I, somebody's looking for some T-bone steaks. Where should I send them? Right. You know. So remember, too, that the portable is going to depend on the type of talking communications that you want to do. Do I want to just talk locally? 
Do I want to have a radio on me so that when I'm out in my yard working and the wife in the house says, come on in, it's dinner time, maybe just a small little handheld. Now, if you're getting into bigger and longer range communications where some job sites are like that now, and I'm talking mm -hmm. major communicate uh, major job sites where they're building uh, putting up a big skyscraper or something they usually will have a mobile radio that the boss can go to and call somebody that's probably working way up on the 20th floor of this building they've got a handheld they'll hear him but he wants a mobile then to have a little bit stronger signal to get out correct but we also have to think and 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 this is this is not just going to impact all amateur or just amateur, but it's going to impact all things. Remember, with a base radio, mm -hmm. you're, you're you know well. Let me just put it this way: when a mobile, and we should also clarify. I guess you could say it a base. What's the difference between a base and a mobile? Well, really, the mobile is in your vehicle, hooked up, powered right. to your car, antenna on side on the top of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Your base is basically you have a power supply in your house, and then you have an antenna on the outside. Now, when I lived in an apartment. I could not put an antenna on the outside of the apartment. It was a house that right. was converted in three apartments. We had the top yeah. floor of the house, and then the bottom floor was nice, but I couldn't do that. But what I could do is I had it in window air conditioner, so what did I do? I stuck the magnet mount antenna on there. Yeah. Now, the nice part about it is is that, hey, with a high-gain magnet mount, you can really mathematically, you know, and, and with a dB gain and everything get up that power level oh, yeah. on there and already yep. at a second story level where I was at, I was equivalently doing what maybe a mobile could do depending, you know, depending on the power output of the mobile, but what a mobile could do with an antenna outside, a unit gain antenna outside. But once again, that's, that comes into this age old question of what do I use? What do I do? Mm -hmm. Because is it, is it handheld or is it mobile? Yep. Obviously a lot of people, and I'll tell you, you, you're probably going to want both. You should get both. Mm -hmm. And the reason you should kind of look at both, and I, trust me, I know it's easy to spend your money hands down. It's easy to spend anybody's money. Yeah. But these days, you really can actually kind of, if you plan it right, if you can get both, you obviously have the best of both worlds, but then you can actually start to integrate things like have cross-banding in the house so you can go from your handheld to your mobile and you can increase the range on there yes. too. So, yes. so there. But I guess one other thing to point out is is that there are some new things coming out where there are um, mobile, like, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's not only just an amplifier, but mm. it allows you to connect basically the antenna on your radio here and plug it into your speaker mic jack on there. Yep. And what it can do is it's a small little box. It runs on 12 volts. I think what was the one I had three or four amps on there. But what it Yo, did is, yes. is it you could you could do like two to five watts in, and have twenty to twenty five watts come out. Oh yeah. So there you're converting your handheld into a mobile. There. Many years ago, uh, yes, I had that too. I had, um, if oh golly, I can't remember. I think it was a little ICOM. Is all I had handheld. Nothing wrong with it. it. Was a good little radio. I didn't have the money, as you mentioned, to buy myself a good mobile. But I got on a deal from a guy, what they call the handheld mobile amplifier. Yep. Two watts in, got me 25 watts out at the antenna, yep. Yep. and it worked fine yep. until I was able to get myself a mobile. And Motorola, Motorola, you know, got to get hats off to them. They did a lot of that. They had what they, they called their Converticom series, and mm -hmm. dating back all the way to the HT was the HT two twenties, like something out of the eighties, where basically you would take, get in your squad car, you drop your handheld into this device, you would go ahead and you could even lock it so that no one could pull the radio out. What it did is it then automatically connected to the microphone on the side there, and you used the microphone like an actual mobile microphone. Yep. It had a speaker. Yep. You still changed the channel, interacted it with there, but then what happened was is that it was connected to an amplifier. So then it would yep. come out. You yeah, know? you know, the first place I saw what you're talking about was many years ago when Chicago Police Department first went into the 400 megahertz range. Yep. And they took all the mobile radios out of all their units, mm -hmm. all the Chicago, and then they had, like John just talked about, this device that when the officer had to get out of the car, he just grabbed a handheld, stuck it on his hip, and went about his business out of the car. And that's and that's very cost-effective, too, especially mm -hmm. in today's day. You know, we're getting into digital radios, and, you know, yep. you know we'll get on to business a little more in, in public safety in just a moment. But, you know, you're talking, like, $1,000, $2,000 for oh, yeah. a public safety digital, 
yep. you know, blah, 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 radio. But, yep. um, but yeah, so amateurs kind of, and, and like I said, I see that a lot here. And you know what? Here's the best thing, though. I'm going to tell you this hands down. Whether you choose a mobile or whether you choose a handheld, one thing I'm going to give you as, let me, let me be your Elmer, put my Elmer hat on here for a moment. Choose the radio that you like and that you want. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to say and get into there, but there's a heated debate with certain brands of going and it's crappy brands, it's crappy this and this and this and this. No, no, no. If that brand works for you and 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 you can use it and you like it, yep. that's fine. I would be amiss and, and going ahead and lying to you if I would say that I have not had my fair share of handhelds and do not currently have my fair share of handhelds. My wife is probably not watching this, so I'm okay saying that right now. Okay, <laughs> yeah. but but no, because you're gonna find ones that are going to work for you, and that are gonna serve different purposes. Once again, public safety business, a little more lockdown, more features, different things, amateur, you know, those kind of things. But that's that's a different that's a different episode or something like that on there. So let's move on to GMRS because GMRS yep. falls into this too. GMRS does that same thing, four or five watt handhelds. Uh, 50 watt mobiles on there so once again gmrs comes there now just like with the amateur you have gmrs repeaters yes some areas are saturated now once again by the twin cities i mean i can i can literally in st paul throw a rock and probably hit a gmrs repeater up here northwest wisconsin the last mm. gmrs repeater i knew of is actually off the air right now and he said he was trying to find a different location but maybe maybe that's what we should do put a gmrs repeater up that's another episode. Why not? Why not? Right. Um, it's just money, right? Yeah. Um, but but w- but with that being said, so now that that puts it in things. Okay. Hey, whew, there is no repeaters. How do I communicate on GMRS effectively? You're only going to be able to do it by direct line of sight and between the two radios that are going to be talking, whether it be mobiles or mobile to handhelds or handhelds. Without a repeater, that's what you're going to end up having to do. Now you're going to want to remember too. Get the best quality antenna you can. That's going to help make your distance to the other radio you want to talk to a lot better. Correct. Now, in that case, if, if I was saying, hey, what do I really want? What am I looking at, handheld or mobile for GMRS? Man, I would probably go, personally, I would probably go with the GMRS, like you said, and if possible, have a high-gain antenna, depending. Now, because I know there's GMRS radios out there that don't do the full legal limit. Yep. On there, and we are restricted as GMS, uh, GMRS operators to max power out and those kind of things like that. On there, where amateur, we have a little more wiggle room on things, but yeah, so in that case, yes, if you're not near repeaters, a handheld is not, it, I mean, it's not going to be very effective. You know, you're looking four to five watts UHF, especially as you can see in the background here. Mm-hmm. We got the woods here, that's not going to cut it too well. It's going to go great locally, maybe a short range, but then it's not going to get VHF. So now we have to automatically go to that power up. Yeah, you're going to want a good quality radio and a good, like you said, high-gain antenna to get you a better distance when you haven't got repeaters to work with. Yep. Now, FRS, MERS, those are those are locked um, power outputs, so we're not going to discuss them today. Uh, we already kind of touched on CB. Let's go ahead now and kind of dive into then the business realm and then the public safety realm because mm-hmm. this, is, this is big. You already alluded to it a little bit um, on there. You know, businesses are starting to use radios. Hands down, yes. they're starting to use radios. Yes. I'm surprised that they haven't used radios sooner than later. But the interesting part about it is is that um, you're right. Um, the choice of radio for business, hands down, is handheld. Yes, yep. definitely. Uh, yeah, like I said earlier, too, if you've got a business and you just need to have close in communications with your employees or other supervisors or whatever you have you, uh, just handhelds would probably work for you, you know. As I said before, if you're going to be talking, having to talk longer distances, uh, one good example would be, in, in the area up here, I personally know, a paving company, all right? And they do some paving for the counties and the townships here and everything like that. So now they're going to be having people along a road, maybe over a mile, close two or three miles down the road. They're, they've got mobile radios mounted on their paving equipment and their trucks, vehicles, and, and, and even in the dump trucks that are bringing the hot uh, stuff to dump into the paving machine, they're all with mobile radios because now you're talking, you have to talk a lot longer of a distance. Right. Yep. Yeah, and that's and that's really what it is. You know, it's, and, and that kind of thing, it's really, 
really interesting, unique because business or their type of business, I should yep. say, or your purpose is going to dictate whether they do um, mobiles or not. Um, yep. Bus companies are a good one. Uh, transportation companies, I see a lot, like oh yeah, like like um, bus, uh, like whether it be um, municipality buses mm -hmm. <clears throat> or um, uh, sometimes uh, I've seen uh, like medivans or stuff like that. They don't. They don't need handhelds. They don't need handhelds at all. They're they're in no. they're in the bus. Yep. They're driving around. They got the mobiles. Maybe your supervisor or something. Maybe they'll have a handheld. But even then, it's very limited. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. If they got a handheld too, most of the time he's sitting on a desk while he's doing his paperwork, listening to what's going on with his company. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and 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 kind of the now the funny part is the schools. Um, I noticed that they are kind of sometimes a little bit of mix because obviously the bus companies are tied in. The buses are going to have mobiles. But the people in the schools, they're going to have the handhelds yep. because they need to talk within the schools yes. on there. So really, it's interesting that by band, I guess, or, or type of communication, that's really dictating them on what they're using, whether it be a handheld or whether it be a mobile. Yeah. That, uh, well, it would be that. Yeah. And like mm -hmm. I said, too, depending on the distance, you got to talk. As I said earlier, too, I might have a handheld on. My wife's got one inside the house. I'm out doing something. I got... A lot of acreage here that I'm on, I could be working and cutting down a tree. That way she can call me and tell me, hey, uh, come on to the house. I got a phone call you got to return. It's an important one. Yep. Or come on in. It's time to eat. Or, hey, I'm going to go shopping. I'll be back in a little while. So when I'm talking that kind of thing, fine. The handheld is perfect for that. Yep. Now, I think the last one we want to talk about is like public safety communications. And that is a 50-50 split. You know, there you got you have handheld users and you have mobile users, um, and I and I guess the dictation of what they're going to use more of is really going to be de based on a department. Uh -huh. Is it is it more so? Is it a is it a um, a volunteer department or is it a an actual full time department and stuff? Yeah. Like at my ambulance service, we run a mobile with every ambulance, obviously, because we have to. We're we're, we're oh, well, I don't know if we're technically required to. I know we have to have required things, but. We run a mobile, and then we also have two handhelds in there so that the crews that are on, they can take the handhelds when they get on scene or when they're there. Correct, yeah. Um, They've got to, yeah. But now I've seen it actually on the flip side where I see, like, some full-time departments, um, they have a mobile in their rig, but it's more so that the full-time departments, they're just issuing the portables out to the people directly, mm -hmm. and the people are using that. Now, once again, this is where system dictation is going to come into play. You know, obviously, if you're talking about a big public safety system, they, you know, want the sub-level basement of the third level from a house built in 1952, <laughs> you know, that yeah. kind of thing. But um, but they, they, they do that. And then if you go to the other side of the spectrum where you have a part-time department, mm -hmm. let's say, they tend to issue out portables. So right. it's, it's almost like a three, maybe four to one. So there'll be four handhelds for every mobile radio that they use because... Yeah. Where you're going to give a mobile radio to a first responder, you know, that's going to respond from their house or something. Yes. So. Yeah. When I used to be on the fire department up here, too, uh, I had a handheld because when the page went out that there was a fire, okay, the chief or the assistant chief, whoever was listening in, uh, we were able to call and say, okay, I, I'm on my way to the station. Mm -hmm. All right. Or if I was whatever and the trucks were already out, I might even call and say, I'm on my way to the scene. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and then when ambulance service is up here, too, they did that, too, because sometimes when the sheriff's department would page out for an ambulance, yeah. he needed to know, back then especially, who's responding. Yeah. Yep. Do I have to continue doing pages until I hear two people or three people say they're going to be responding? That's why the volunteers had handhelds a lot in Correct. a lot of these communities up here. Correct. So I guess, you know, kind of to summarize the whole event here today, or I should say the installment here today, is, you know, as we kind of discuss this across the, the different types of, I guess, communication disciplines, we can kind of call mm -hmm. it there, it really kind of is geared or, or driven towards that. You know, amateur side, yeah, it's going to be personal preference based on how you're connecting to the system, you know, or what, you know, where repeaters mm -hmm. are close by or whatever. You get the GMRS, kind of the same thing on there. But as we slide into business and we slide into public safety, it really is going to be hard driven by the the discipline of how they're using it. So oh, really, yes. yeah. So it's kind yes. of I think it's I think it's unique because, you know, it's not a blanket thing that we can really apply. We can't yeah. say no handheld always, mobile always, that yeah. kind of thing. And John, if you don't mind, I want to mm -hmm. 
throw a few things out here to people that are not amateurs. They haven't got FRS, GMRS, CBs, or nothing. They're the Scanderland people. Yep. Sc- same. Yeah. You know yep. what? Yes. Scanderland. I forgot. Here's the thing that you got to remember, and we've been going through this here in the northern parts of the Midwest here. If you're looking to buy a scanner, find out the department that you want to listen to. Find out are they the old analog? Are they now digital? Have they gone now to a trunking system? Yep. Find all that out first before you go jumping and buying yourself a scanner. There's a lot of good ones that are handhelds that receive great. I've got one myself. There's a lot of units for the house. I've got that for yep. myself also in the house. Yep, the, the same thing. Yeah. Scanners are mobile and yeah. and handheld in this case. Okay. Remember this. Some people now have also come at me in the years past and said they had arguments with me saying, it's illegal to own one. It is not illegal to own one and listen to what's going on. What's illegal is if you take that information and you publish it somewhere else. In other words, uh, open up your own YouTube page and say, hey, look what I was listening to here the other day at my police department chasing some guy at a high speed. And I guess... and I guess That'd be illegal. And, that, and there are certain states that do have some restrictions on that. You know, Minnesota, you do need a scanner's permit. I believe you used to, used to back in the day. I don't know... Um, I know as an amateur radio operator, I was covered underneath that, but I'm not sure what a lot of people do. But once again, that kind of comes down into it. You can also use your handheld and your mobiles as scanners, too, on there. A lot of them have the mm-hmm. wideband received. But, but yeah, scanners fall into that same category of, of, of handheld or mobile. So, and you know what? We'll go one step further. Mm-hmm. Marine radios. I do sometimes forget the marine. Same thing. Marine yep. handhelds are certain wattage on there. Marine mobiles are certain wattage on there. And... Uh, someone could correct me because I don't really do too much with Marine, but I believe handhelds are five and mobiles are 25. So yep. I'm sure when this airs, someone's going to go in the comments. They'll be able to go ahead and, and, and correct that for Maybe us. Maybe somebody's got a 50-watt Marine radio out there now. I don't know. Yeah. I, I know uh, your grandpa, my dad, when we ha- we lived down in Illinois, we had a boat. We used to go out on Lake Michigan. I went and I bought one of those Marine radios for that because you were able to make telephone calls to oh, a yeah onshore operator mm-hmm. with that radio to place a phone call for you uh, it's also good to listen to the weather reports or the number one thing is one certain channel a marine radio has is always monitored by the coast guard yep you could get on that channel if you've got a problem and call directly to the coast guard or there was one time we were out there in a the boat somebody broke down with their boat they were like three four miles offshore off chicago and they were waving their life jackets and everything to get my attention. I went over there, and I got on my Marine radio for them, and then there was a service there. It would, they weren't Coast Guard. Um, yeah, it was like a Marine towing service or something. Yeah, yeah I yeah. got a hold of them, and they yeah. came out and gave got the guy. I think they actually got the guy's motor running for him is what nice. it was. So Marine radios are good, handheld or the type you can mount in the boat. Yep. Well, you know... Um, I think we're, we're just about out of time. I think we're over a little bit. I'd like to keep it about 30 minutes here. I think we're over a little bit. But um, I want to first say, everybody, thank you for um, tuning in. Once again, I know it's recorded. Sorry. Um, but next couple weeks, we're going to be that way. Uh, please do put in the comments on there. Go ahead and continue the discussion. And, and you know, give your own story. Give some things on there. You know, these are really done for discussion purposes to kind of get people talking about communications and not turning in the he said, she said, all those kind of things yeah. like that. Just as someone put it once, you know, hey, it's like having coffee after the ham club meeting where we could just chat about things. Yeah. So thanks for coming on. Thanks for being the guest um, today. I might add one more thing. Oh, one more thing. Okay. This is for the amateur radio community. Okay. okay. Talking to people who are not amateurs. No, we do not always sit in our basement talking on a radio, eating mac and cheese. I talked about that in this, but this <laughs> last week's episode. I actually posted a link, so if you're wondering what we're talking about, we talked about the Velveeta shells and cheese commercial. Yeah, yeah. It is posted okay. in the link on last week's um, live episode on there. You can go in there, click on it, and yeah, yeah, no, we're, we are not pasty white and, and everything yeah. like that on there, so... But uh, thanks for coming on. Thanks for being there. We'll I had a good time. I hope you'll have me back sometime so, in the yes, future. We will. And thank you to everyone tuning in. Yeah. Um, remember, 8 p.m. Monday nights. That's Monday, 8 p.m. Central Time. Communications to Cigars YouTube channel. Also check out our Facebook page for updates yep. and everything like that on there. Thank you. Um, 
Have a good day and enjoy your cigars.